All right, so in this video, I just wanted to go over how to get SDL working and how to get it rendering something to the screen. We're going to be using the code from the previous video on how to set up your Visual Studio environment and how to get your dependencies set up. If you are not set up, please go back to that video and get your environment set up. But if you're ready to go, let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is include our SDL header file. And then in our main function, we can call SDL init. Now this is going to take some number which represents the flags for whatever systems you want to initialize. So those are all prepended by an SDL init. And then for this video, we're going to initialize the video mode. If you want to initialize other things, you can call SDL init everything. That'll initialize everything, or you can pipe in different values like this. And that'll work just the same. If you don't want to initialize any of the subsystems, uh, you can see an example of this in the game that I'm working on. I don't initialize anything on the first initialization. Instead, I call this one, SDL in its subsystem, it works the exact same way. You just pass in whatever subsystem you want to initialize, and it'll do that for you. Uh, for this example, though, we'll start with video initialized. Let's create a Boolean to track if the game is running, because we will need a loop to continue running. If the game isn't running, then the program will just close. And at the very end, we need to call SDL quit. And I always put a number in there, but there's no number. SDL quit, that just shuts down SDL. And then at the very end, we can return zero. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is you need your function signature to look like this. If your main function does not look like this, you can see we're gon gonna get an error. Unresolved external symbol SDL main. It's saying it does not understand what your main function is. It needs the uh, proper function signature. And now you can see it's going to start. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to need a SDL window context. And we can call SDL create window. This will take a title. The X and the Y position are going to be your screen positions. You can leave these as null. You can put them at whatever value you want, but I think a really clean thing to do uh, is just call SDL window pause centered. And you can do that for both the X and the Y position, and that'll just center your window on the screen. Uh, next, we're going to have the screen dimensions. I'm just going to set mine to 640 by 480, and then whatever window flags you want. As you can see right there, there's a whole bunch of window flags. We can set uh, OpenGL mode, we can set full screen, uh, you can set a whole bunch of different border styles. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of possibilities, although you don't need any of them. Next thing we need is a renderer. Uh, we'll just call SDL create renderer, pretty simple to remember. The renderer needs a window context uh, to hook into. This index is just going to say which driver do you want it to initialize. The easiest thing is just say negative one, and that'll just be the first one uh, that you can use. And then we'll pass in SDL renderer accelerated for the renderer flags. And what this is going to do is it's going to use hardware acceleration uh, if we can, if that's available. It's definitely something you want to do. So now that we have our window and renderer set up, we can start drawing. Every time we draw, we want to set our render draw color to whatever color is going to draw. Uh, for the background color, we can just set this to black right now, which is zero in the RGB values. Uh, and then we'll put 255 for the alpha. The alpha is just the opacity, so zero is going to be completely transparent. Uh, 255 is going to be completely opaque. 
Next thing we're going to do is call render clear on the renderer. And then finally, at the end, once we're done drawing everything and uh, that should be more clear. Uh, we just render whatever else we want in this space. And then we finally we present the renderer to the screen. This is just going to draw it to our window context. Uh, so at this point, we can run the debugger. And as you can see, here is our window context, and the renderer is drawing black to the screen. And if you don't believe me, you can go ahead and change some of these some of these numbers here. And the background color changes to whatever values you put in. Uh, so I'm going to set those back to 0, 0, 0. Now we can do more things such as SDL render. Pres uh, get autocomplete working here. Uh, so if we want, we can draw a line to our renderer. Oops. All right, so now if we run that, you'll see there's no line. Now there should be one from here coming down to wherever 50 is at. Uh, reason being is we never change the render draw color. Let's create another one of these and uh, we'll create it pure red. And now you can see that line. Uh, pretty simple, but it's just something quick and easy to get on the screen. Remember, anytime you draw to the screen, you want to set your draw color to whatever color you want. And then you render whatever you need. All right, so that should wrap it up for rendering to the window, creating a window context and rendering to that window. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at implementing some input processing so that we can close the window if we want to. Thanks. Have a good one.